What's going on my people? You don't know the boy Yavan is back here again. Today we'll come to talk about Newcastle, we'll come to talk about Tottenham, we'll come to talk about the Premier League, and we'll come to talk about Arsenal. As you know, this is an Arsenal channel. More like a football channel, sorry. So anyway, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe this video. Because you don't know, we're there here trying to make everybody happy. Trying to push out as much news that we can push out. Anything that we know going on in the Premier League. It doesn't matter. if It's not even have to be with about Arsenal. It's just at the Premier League on all. We will just let you know what's going on. Because it's good to know what's going on in and around your football club as well. But moving forward, now we're going to talk about Newcastle. As we know, Newcastle have um going to be sell mike actually decided to sell newcastle at the moment and newcastle is up for 300 million and that's what um mike actually looking to sell i believe everything is done the the, the paperwork is in and the premier league is looking and 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 the and, and the personnel who's going to own the club which is going to be three owner but majority of the shareholder going to be um the abby dabby and it's going to be amanda and it's going to be the ruben brother and Amanda and Ruben brother are gonna have ten percent shit um stake in the club. So the Abu Dhabi um company gonna own eighty percent. But even though we are getting new owners and stuff like that, if it was for me, I would look at it as really something to really look into more deep and see where Newcastle is going. If it was gonna be the Abu Dhabi who they are the company who own Newcastle on their own, we would have been in like the worry that have be up there. But for me, I, I, I'm no expert, but I'm just thinking because we have the Ruben and Amanda who own 10% each, is they going to have enough money? Because as you know, we are Chelsea and uh, Man City or their owner does take the club and they move, take the club from zero to 100 in space of no time. The Abu Dhabi would have done that, but knowing that they still got 10%, 20% of the, of the club given to two persons, individual so is they gonna have the money for if the Abu Dhabi want to buy say a, a player Neymar B remember Ruben and Amanda have to have money as well to put in to buy the, those players to put them on the table we don't know how much money they got so that is something where it's a little bit you know in the little bit iffy for me but the Ruben and Amanda was the one who come in where Mike Ashley decided that he was going to sell to the Abu Dhabi if it wasn't for them maybe Mike Asher wouldn't really sell. And as you know, Newcastle fans need to see the back of um, Mike Asher's like, oh, Arsenal want to see the back of Cranky. So this is where the Newcastle is. But remember, there's still a force to reckon with. And Arsenal have to look. And Arsenal have to make a move. Moving on to Arsenal. As you know, Newcastle is going to sell. Abu Dhabi is going to come in and own them. Yeah? So we believe now is the time... Because we never act when 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 um when um Abramovich come in with Chelsea, we believe oh it's not gonna really affect us. Boom, it did. We never act when um the, the, the Saudi prince them come in for um Man City, boom, Premier League again, title again, even though Man City doesn't win the, the Champion League as yet, you know, Chelsea win Champion League and two European League. So um how many were four? I think Chelsea even win more um, um, champ Premier League than us. Yeah, because we only win three Premier League. Chelsea win what, four? I believe are five. Either four or five. Man City definitely win more than us. So it was a force that we sit down when team, club are attacking. We sit down and we didn't counter-attack. So this is something now where Kroenke have to look and see where you, you're going to have a top eight coming by 2022, we're good, definitely going to have a top eight. We're going to have Man City, Man U, Newcastle, Everton, Arsenal, and um, Tottenham, Liverpool, and, and, and who else I didn't call? So, yeah, so it's going to be them team that who's going to push for that four place for the Champions League. Plus, they're going to push to win the Premier League as well. Because as you know, these owner coming in, they got a vision. And the vision that they got is to win title. Unlike Arsenal, who try not to win title. So this is where we have to take everything and look into what we are doing. Because sooner rather than later, we're going to finish out on the top 10. If the Cranky decide to continue business the way they're doing their business now, we definitely will finish out on the top 10. So that is something. Now we have got a speculation, a lot of players they link us with. But 
I don't believe Arsenal is in no position to buy any player. Until I see their signed player, that's the time I will believe that Arsenal signed the player. And we know we link with Philippe Coutinho, but we want to sell a Bangiam. I don't understand how that work out because we have a world class player with it, with a Bangiam, and we need to get in Philippe Coutinho. Is Philippe Coutinho going to come to Arsenal? That is the thing, knowing that we're going to sell a Bangiam. And that's the thing that where player, sometimes people just believe that player just go for the money, player go for trophy, player go for see where team is a force to reckon with. And if we're going to keep on selling our best player and try to get in some other player, oh, it's going to work. We have to keep our best player and then use that world-class player we have to attract other players to come to the club. And that's what always happens in the, in the football. Player look at who is at the club. And is that player is good where they want to play that player. And this is where when players step in and say, okay, I will sign for that club, regardless of the fact they don't have Champions League, but looking to the, the squad that they're building and, and how they stay, they will maybe get Champions League next year if we push, and we will never push that hard. But more than likely, 50%, we will get 70, 80%, sorry, we will get Champions League position, and then you have a player come to your club. But if we have these less than average player. Do you really believe player, big name, world class player gonna wanna come to our club? I don't think so. So we're looking at um Thomas Partey that they said oh, a deal has been every one of these players that you see and hear about speculation. This is why I don't really that's why you see me, I don't speculate about player saying that they're coming into the club, coming in, coming in. I would more speculate on player going out because I'm, I know that's more likely to happen than these big name player coming in. This is why when you see other people put up a 10 video and they said, oh, that player coming in, that player, I don't do that because with Arsenal, it's not possible. So this is why I have to wait and see and hear from my source where I know that, okay, this player is there doing a medical and, and, Yes, I'm going to sign. Then I said, okay, I will go with the news. Now, when we look and see where Arsenal is at the moment, and people saying that um, Arsenal is going to, the, the owner going to put in money this summer. The money that I am looking to, to, to see they put in is about 200 million. Nothing less. If they're really serious about making this big step, in the Premier League, 200 million. And the next thing, you cannot sell a Bangiam. You have to give a Bangiam the money that he won. Because he's at he's a 30, he's looking to go, he's looking to win. You hear the Gabon um, Federation come out and saying that Arsenal is not ambitious enough and stuff like that. So all of this pressure putting on to a Bangiam, we have to do something out of the blues, out of thin air, like, you know, give him what he wants. Sign the player them to show him that we are a force to reckon with and then he will stay and then we we'll build on it and then we can push for this top four, for this winning the Premier League. Not top four, winning the Premier League. And that's the only way it's going to work. You see Liverpool do it. You see Manchester United do it. You see, you see um, Manchester City do it. You see Chelsea do it. They keep their best player and use them to attract world-class player. That is what Arsenal have to do. So moving on now, we're going to talk about Tottenham. As you know, Tottenham has sacked um, Pochettino and now they come up and ask him Pochettino to take a pay call. But going back, we have to look what Pochettino have done for Tottenham. Remember when Pochettino come, Tottenham was nobody. Now, when Pochettino come in, we did him first year, he put back Tottenham on the North London map. Because at one point in time, Tottenham wasn't even there. It was about Arsenal in London, Arsenal are Ch Chelsea is the best in the London. We have to give props where props do, and then Arsenal, and then Tottenham. But now you have Chelsea, and now you have Tottenham, and then Arsenal. And that is the work of Pochettino. So now Pochettino do that. He, he come in, he bring up the, the, the youth team, he take them from the youth team and bring them to, to, the, to the first team. He bring in a lot of players. As you know, a lot of players get individual accolade from the Premier League during him time there. Play like Dele Alli, um, um, Harry Kane. You have a lot of players who go into the England squad. At one point, you have at least a minimum five players from Tottenham playing for England in the U in the U last um, Euro and the last um, World Cup. Them time, Arsenal only have one, and I think it was just Danny Welbeck. And we not even did have yeah that Danny Welbeck. That's it. And now they. After all of that, you know, Pochettino, they, were, they, they go to the Champions League semi-final one year. Then they go to the following year, they go to the Champions League final. 
yeah so all of that he went to to um he went in the summer and spent literally less no money so all of them things that him do even one point in time where he he didn't have no money to spend in the january transfer window so all of that what pochettino have done for Tottenham, they turn around when he's going through a bad spell and sack him now daniel levy asking him to take a pay cut <laughs> and that's a joke to me because if i was um pochettino i would tell him where to stick his head i would tell him because the way he treat me remember pochettino was the one again who made them make actually this year you know Tottenham make over 100 million so you make over 100 million but yes they're gonna ask me to take a pay cut when you sack me uh, are you crazy on top of that, you put a bag on me where me and my coaching staff cannot coach no Premier League club until the end of the season because Tottenham was still paying them. So all of that you done, all of that I done for you, what you done for me, but you're going to turn around and ask me to take a pay cut? Are you dumb? So this is the question I'm asking you. If you were Pochettino, what would you say to Daniel Levy? Would you tell him where to stick his? Tell me. So you don't know. This is all that's happening in the Premier League. So you don't know, big up on yourself. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Yardman AFC. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. So whenever I drop any video, you'll be the first to get it. Big up on yourself, my people. And you don't know, they are pushing the work. But they are going to all the news that we can go in. So whenever the news break, I'm always there to sell you know, A, B, R, C, what's going on. So big up on yourself. Over.